Hi, welcome to this quick tutorial. Today we will be looking at setting up a development environment for making Google Chrome apps using Apache Cordova. So let's go and install some required programs. So if we open our internet browser and we search for JDK, we click on the first link, we click download on platform JDK, we accept the license agreement, we scroll down the page and we select the one for Windows 64 bit. We let this download. While that's downloading, I want to go and get a Intel emulator acceleration program. It's called Intel HAXM. It's the first link again here on Google. We can download that. We can scroll down and we can select the very first zip here. Again, there's another license agreement here, so if we just scroll down to the bottom. We can accept the license and download the zip. I'm going to want a text editor as well for editing my files, so I'm going to pick Sublime Text. So I'm going to go ahead and download that as well. And I'm going to get the Windows 64 bit version. I also need Apache Ant, so I can Google for that as well. And by clicking on the binary distribution link here, I can download it. And just scroll down, we'll get to the current release of Ant here, and we can download a zip archive. Okay. And I need the Android SDK itself. So come over to this side here. Now I scroll down. I say use an existing IDE. I can download the SDK tools for Windows. I can accept that license agreement. And I can press download the SDK tools for Windows. And finally, I like to install a helper program for the command line prompt that adds auto completion. It's called C Link. So if I download that. The very first link here, I come over to the Downloads tab and I download the very first installer here. So click on that, click here, and it will start the download. Okay, so we hit Show All Downloads here, we can see we've all the required files downloaded. So we'll start off with installing this one, I'll just click on it. I can press Yes on this UAC notification, and I can just hit I Agree, Next, and Install. Okay, I'll install, I can press Close. I can go ahead and install Sublime Text. So run. Uh, yes, I want to install Sublime Text. We can press next. It will install the program file, Sublime Text 2. That's fine. I don't want to add it to my Explorer context menu. I can press next. I press install. That's Sublime Text 2 installed. I need to install the JDK. So I can open up this one. I can press yes. I can press next. Okay, it's going to install my JDK. I can press next again. Wait for this to finish. Okay, I can press next. It's going to install Java. And that's our JDK and a Java runtime environment installed. We can press close on that. Now we can go ahead and install the Intel Accelerator Emulator. So we can open this up, we can double click on this executable, we can just run it straight from the zip, it's okay. We can press yes. Now if this failed, saying your machine does not have VTX technology enabled, assuming your machine was bought within the last five years and it's on Netbook, you'll probably be able to enable VTX technology. If you go into your BIOS by pressing the F2 key on your manufacturer splash screen when it boots up, if you navigate through there, you should see something about enabling virtualization technology. If you enable that and reinstall this program, it will work just fine. Okay, so we can just go through this, press next. And it will install. Okay, we do not want to launch documentation, so just uncheck that and press finish. Okay, now I need to install Apache Ant to do this. It's just, this is all full of binaries, so I can just copy the folder. I can press start, build computer, go to C drive, and paste. Let's go to that copy over.
Okay, I need to add some environmental variables so my command prompt knows where to find Java now. So if I come over to computer, right click on it, hit properties, I click on advanced system settings, and click environmental variables, I create a new one called path. And the value for it is going to be the following. So I go to Apache Ant, open that folder, and open bin, come up to my address bar, and I copy the contents of it. Come back over to my system properties window, and I paste that in. I then insert a semicolon, come back over to my explorer window, go back to my local disk C, I open program files, I find Java, I find JDK, and I copy this path here. Okay. So I paste that path in and I put a slash bin at the end of it. And I press OK. Then I create another environmental variable called Java Home. And this is the same path we just copied but without the slash bin. So it looks like that. And we can press OK on this. We can press OK and press OK again. Now we can go ahead and install the Android SDK tools. So we'll run this file. We do want to allow it to install, so press yes and press next. It's found our JDK, that's perfect. We can press next. We'll install it for anybody using this computer, press next. And it's going to install to that path, which is fine. Press next. And we can press next again. Okay, that's finished, so we can press next and we'll start the SDK manager. There's a few things here that I want to install. I want to install the Android SDK tools. I want to install everything under Android 4.4.2. And I want to install the USB driver. I want to install the Intel emulator accelerator. So check all them. Let's install 12 packages. And then just select the root node of each of these packages and accept the license agreement. And press install. Okay. They will install in the background there. While that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and add the required paths for the Java tools to our environmental variables. So if I come back over to start, I go to computer, I go to local disk C, and I go to program files, I find my Android folder, I find my Android SDK, and I open up platform tools. I copy the location again up here. I come back to start, and I right click on computer, I go properties, I go advanced system settings again, I go environmental variables again, and I edit the path. I edit the path to, to include that path I just copied, which is C, program files, x86, Android, Android SDK, platform tools. And I need to go back again, and if I go back to the SDK folder, I open up the tools folder, copy that path as well, and just paste it in. Okay? And we can exit this window, this window, that's still installing. I can get rid of these windows here too. I'll just wait a moment while this downloads and installs the required files. Okay, that is finished. I can go ahead and create a simulated device. So if I press tools, I can go to manage AVDs and I can press new. I'm just going to call mine Android. I'm going to select a Nexus 4. I'm going to select the Google 4.2 API level 19. I'm going to select the Intel image. And RAM size, I'm going to set that to 700. I'm going to press OK. Press OK again. And I can hit start. 
It should boot up. So that's booting up. I'm going to go over and grab Node.js. So if I just Google for Node.js again, click on the first link, and click the install button. We'll download an MSI for installing Node.js. I'm stomping this up. I press run. Next. Accept the license agreement. Next. It's going to install the laptop. That's fine. I press next again. Next. Install. Okay, we can just press yes on that. We have Node.js installed. Let's go ahead and install the required Node modules for building Cordova applications and Chrome applications. So in our command line prompt, we're just going to type npm minus g, which says the global install package. Install, we're going to type Cordova. We're going to type CCA. And we're going to type delayed string. Press enter. Okay, I spelled Cordova wrong. We can fix that in a minute. Okay, you'll see our Android simulator just came up there in the background, which is good. Okay, so we can go up here and I can just fix my spelling mistake. So it should be C O R D O V A. Okay, perfect, it's installed. So what we can do now is we can type CCA. Yeah, that's actually been installed, sorry. CCA and the LA stream. Just give it a moment to install. Okay, brilliant, it's installed. We can type CCA. Check ENV. This will check that our installation is correct. And it is, perfect. So we can go ahead and create a new application. So if we type CCA, we'll see all the options available. So we'll go CCA create. Hello world. Let's go ahead and create a hello world application. Okay, so if we go into the hello world directory. We'll see we have some files here that are automatically created. We can do CCA prepare and we'll build the required binaries for installing on a phone. And then we can install it on the emulator by running CCA run Android minus minus emulator. So in a moment we should see this pop up over here. Our application installed. Just give it a moment. Okay, perfect. You can see it's after launching our application. It's going to load up now in a short little while. There we go, hello from mobile. But how do we go about editing that file now? So we can back up for a directory, which is hello world, and we just do a directory listing. We'll see there's a folder here called www. If we go into that www folder, these are all the files that are being served. So let's go ahead and edit one of them. So we'll open up this folder, and we'll open up the index.html file with my text editor. So Sublime isn't here on the open width, so I'll just go choose default program. I'll go Browse, uh, I'll go Sublime Text 2, I'll go Sublime Text, and I'll press OK. 
to the index file, we'll open up with Sublime. I'll just change mobile to Coder Dojo. And we can save this file. And then back over here, we can rerun CCA prepare and CCA run Android. If we look at our simulator again, this will install the new application. And it should read Hello Coder Dojo in a moment. And there we go, we can see the modifications have been made. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks and goodbye.